How's it going you awesome bunch of bakers? I hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to control the temperature of your no-knead bread. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. One of the most important parts of bread making is temperature control. And you can find a couple of temperature control videos on my channel already. But back when I made those, we used to knead our dough using our hands or a mixer. When making no-knead bread, the temperature control calculations are slightly different. And even though I've been making no-knead bread for over half a year now, it was only today that I figured out a more or less reliable formula. There are a few variables that affect final dough temperature. Some of them we can control and some of them we can't control. The first one is of course the temperature of your kitchen or the room that you're making your bread in. If you don't have air conditioning, in the summer it's gonna be hot. If the heating system in your home is not very consistent, in the winter it may be very cold. So I would assume that in most cases room temperature is something that we can't control. The next thing that affects the temperature is the temperature of the ingredients and usually that will be the flour and the water and in some cases maybe the fat that you're adding or some eggs or any other ingredients like yogurt or sour cream and any number of wet ingredients that are mixed with the flour. I usually don't worry too much about the temperature of the fat or the temperature of the sugar that I'm using or things like that. Unless the ingredient makes up a significant part of the dough it's not important. For the purpose of simplicity and for this video we'll just stick to flour and water temperature when it comes to the ingredients. As you may have noticed earlier when I showed the thermometer, my kitchen is pretty warm at 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but my flour is only at 25 and a half degrees Celsius, which is about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Flour is of course a lot denser than air. It will take longer to warm up and it will take longer to cool down. So you should not expect the flour to always be at the same temperature that the room that it's sitting in. And that of course also means that flour temperature is another temperature that we don't really control. So we are only left with the temperature of the water to control our final dough temperature. Our aim is to calculate the correct water temperature so we can use that water to mix with all the other ingredients and get the desired dough temperature. The desired dough temperature is the temperature that you want your dough to be at after you finish mixing it. For optimal fermentation, generally you want to aim for 24 to 26 degrees Celsius or 75 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to lean towards the cooler end in summer when your kitchen is warm and you want it to be slightly warmer in winter when your kitchen is cold. There are exceptions of course. If your kitchen is extremely warm go lower than 24 degrees Celsius but if your kitchen is very cold go above 26 degrees Celsius. Temperature control requirements will be completely different in every kitchen. If you have watched my videos for a while you know I usually stick to 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. It works for the most part almost all the way throughout the year and that is where this video will come in really handy. Using the formula that I'll show you for temperature control will give you consistent results. And after a while, you won't even have to use it anymore. After doing it a few times, you will get a feel for it. So let's see what this formula is all about. It's pretty simple really. Let's say for example's sake that our desired dough temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is pretty standard, right in the middle. This is my go-to final dough temperature. And it will be the same for a lot of you. Now when it comes to the air temperature, or the room temperature I should say, as I showed earlier, mine is at 27 degrees Celsius. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, my flour was hovering at around 25 and a half degrees Celsius. So we have our three known variables, dough temperature, air temperature, flour temperature. We need to use those temperatures to find the water temperature. And this is the formula. Water equals desired dough temperature minus one times three minus air temperature minus flour temperature. When we translate that to numbers, that will be desired dough temperature, which is 25 minus one times three, which is the number of variables, minus 27, which is air temperature, minus 25.5, which is flour temperature. And that leads us to 72 minus 27 minus 25.5, which equals to 19.5 degrees. And that is the water temperature. I would think this formula is pretty understandable, but there is one thing that you might be asking, and that is what's that minus one stand for? It is there because even though we're using the no-knead method, the dough will still warm up a little bit during mixing. Taking that one degree off will give us some space to work with. And this number may change. In a very cold kitchen, you might not need to subtract anything. But in a very hot kitchen, you might want to go with minus two. As with everything in bread making, it'll be up to you to find out. So let's get the theory out of the way and do a practical example. My flour is hovering between 25 and 25.5 degrees Celsius, depending on where the probe sits. The water that I'm going to use is around 19 and degrees Celsius, just as we calculated earlier. And my kitchen of course is very warm as you saw. And that leads us to another thing to consider. I wouldn't say you have to worry about it, but it's worth noting. And that is the temperature of the bowl that you're using. If it's at room temperature, 
I'll pour in my water, the water will warm right up. It's not going to be anything drastic, but it will affect the final dough temperature slightly. If your kitchen is even hotter than mine, you can cool the bowl down to help you out. Stick it in the fridge or in the freezer for a while, or run it under some cold water before you use it. You can do the opposite in winter, wash it in some warm water before you use it. I usually just use it as it is, but I'm telling you about it to cover all the bases here. Another thing to think about is time, which is even more important when kneading dough. But when making no knead dough, time is also a factor, especially if the temperature of the water is very different from the temperature of the room. If I had left my water sit around for 5 minutes, it would have warmed up by several degrees. So the best thing to do is weighing out your ingredients and using them right away. And here's a great example of the things I was talking about just now. It has been no more than 30 seconds since I poured the water in the bowl and mixed in the yeast and salt. The water has already warmed up by 1 degree. The best thing about the no-need method when it comes to temperature control is that we don't have to worry too much about the mechanical action warming up the dough. Yes, it will go up by 1 to 2 degrees, but it would be nowhere near as heated as it would get during kneading. But saying all that, even when making no-need dough, sometimes we need to work it a little bit. In some cases, a dough scraper will only get you so far. Of course, this dough has been mixed, there's no dry flour. As you can see, we have reached the desired final dough temperature. But this dough is not very smooth, it's a little bit lumpy, and sometimes there may be some other ingredients in there, like oil, which may require a little bit more mixing by hand. And this is what I sometimes do. I keep folding the dough over for around 20 to 30 seconds until it becomes nice and smooth. I'm not doing this to knead the dough, I simply do it to distribute the ingredients evenly. The gluten will develop itself over time, and of course will tighten it by folding. And I know there will be people who will say that this is not an only dough anymore. They think the bread should make itself, basically. If you're not using mixer, if the dough doesn't leave the bowl, and if you're not spending a significant time working the dough, it's a no-knead dough. And doing this for 20-30 seconds will be sufficient. As you can see, now the dough is nice and smooth. But let's check the temperature now, and see what 30 seconds of light mixing have done. The dough temperature has already jumped up by half degree. And there is one more thing to keep in mind. I don't want to complicate things. All I'm trying to do is give you the best tools so you can work it out for yourself. If you're lucky enough to have your kitchen temperature at the same temperature that you want your dough to be at, then usually you can get away with using water that is a couple degrees lower than that and just skip all the calculations. One last thing I want to touch on is the scalding method. A scald usually makes up a large proportion of the final dough. And because it's made with boiling water, we need to wait for it to cool down to a certain temperature before you can use it. There are a couple ways you can go about it. Use all the water of the recipe in the scald and wait for it to cool down, it may take several hours. We we'll use half the water in the scald and the other half for lowering the temperature of the scald once you're ready to use it. But I can't give you exact formulas for that, you just have to experiment. If my flour and my kitchen are around the final dough temperature mark, I simply let the scald cool down to room temperature and then use it. So I hope you're going to find these calculations useful. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.